um depth chart or e either we'll go to our predictions and uh let me see uh yeah the only change of course uh carter stopmeyer safety we went over the injuries of course uh predictions for the ball game give me yours well, let me say depth chart first real quick. Um, uh, not a lot changed on it. Um, that doesn't surprise me. I would not be surprised, however, if we see a little bit different um, offensive line uh, formation on Saturday night. And maybe oh, it's subtle. Know. Maybe it's uh, Tyler Brown's at guard, Khalil Benz is at tackle. Um, we got to talk about these things. We got to talk about it. I, th I think <sighs> – I, I, you know, Jake from DMVR asked a good question about Tyler Johnson uh, yesterday to Coach Prime, and Coach Prime's answer to me was kind of telling that Tyler Johnson might get in the mix a little bit because he mm -hmm. kind of said he paused and he's like, "Tyler's coming," you know, and so I would not be surprised if Tyler Johnson started, or at least was that sixth man, and if something's yeah. not going right, given the Tyler chance. Johnson gets in there, but. I would not be surprised if they mix up maybe guard and tackle on that right side because those two guys have kind of been a mess, um, and they weren't very good on Saturday night. And Tyler Brown's normal position is guard. Khalil Benson's yeah, normal I, position is tackle. I'm going to keep it 100. Now, I, I didn't – now, of course, yeah, Khalil came in as a tackle. Mm -hmm. Tyler Brown came in, of course, as a guard, former guard. Yep. And if you talk about their natural spots – you know, being that that's what they've played most of their career, then yes. Somehow, some way, maybe they went to coach, or uh, maybe coach suggested it, or maybe he saw something and said, do you guys want to switch? Do y'all feel comfortable switching? If that's what y'all feel most comfortable at, then I'll ride with it, you know? But mm -hmm. if as soon as y'all mess up or whatever, then maybe it's going to switch back. I'm, I'm not sure. You know, I know the depth chart said this, but that could just be what they put out. And then put something else on the field, of course. Right. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see them to switch, whether it was to start or mid game, even. Or yeah. we see big Tyler Johnson come in at that right guard spot, and maybe Tyler Brown stays at right tackle, or or Khalil Benson goes to right tackle. But I do right. expect to see uh, some mix up. But that wasn't the only problem on that line. In my opinion, I think the the line never did pick up a stunt the whole whole game. Right. You know, little simple mm -hmm. stuff like that has to be picked up. I don't care what position you're playing at. Right. You know, yeah. uh, little stuff like blocking the air. I don't care what position you're playing at. You can't be blocking the air. The air is not going to get a sack. You yeah, know? and I, I actually saw one play. I don't remember when it was, but um, Savelle Smalls was lined up at tight end, and uh, you could tell it was going to be one of those plays where Savelle, uh, he was on the right side, and uh, he was supposed to pull to the left and create a hole. Well, he never oh, got there. Oh, my gosh, I saw that. He because never got so much there of the because, penetration. Yeah, uh, and I can't remember who it was, whether it was Mayers on the left side or whatever, but they got pushed back so much that Savelle couldn't get around him, and then the back gets tackled uh, for a loss. And you could see on, on TV, Savelle kind of turns to the sideline, kind of like, well, what am I supposed to do? I, you know? I do you had remember that? Flashbacks. I, yeah. Yes, I had flashbacks. I had yeah. flashback. I had PTSD on that right there. Not to take it lightly, but I, I did because that happened to me a, a few times in college football. Being that yeah. guy, Savelle Smalls was <laughs> trying to cover across the pool, and you're like, I'm running to my own guy. You look at the film, and it's, right. you're getting your butt beat, bro. Yeah. So Step you're up, right, you know? I, I, and I, I do believe that one play that I'm talking about was Justin Mayers, actually. So yeah, you're right. It's not just two guys. It, it, it's the collective unit has to be better. Um, I will say this too about the offensive line and um there was that moment in the game because uh, when i went when i went back and watched the broadcast there's a moment where coach prime has headset off and you see him on the sideline very animated talking to the offensive line mm. right and he's kind of you know just kind of getting into them a little bit and um didn't look like he was yelling but more of like you know pep talk trying to you know? inspire yes, trying, to, yes, trying yes. to get them up right yeah, yeah yeah and from that point on like the very next drive all of a sudden it was like Wow, Shadur has a pocket. <laughs> and from that point wow. on, from that point on, so I I I put down when when he did that. At that point in time, Shadur had been sacked four times on the first 16 snaps of the game. He got sacked one time the rest of the game. And wow. so you can that see shows there's you that some they ability have the ability. There. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Yes. They have the ability, but mm -hmm. you got to get that mindset right. You got to right. come into that ball game. And no lie, I I wasn't there in Lincoln, but I I, I was I had did I have played in Tennessee, I have played at Florida State. I have played at Florida, which yeah. is some hostile crowds, uh, at Georgia. And 
just looking at the pictures from Nebraska, I was like, you know what? Somebody, I don't know who, but somebody coming into that thing with some wide eyes, boy. Somebody coming yep. in that thing, you know, but you got to get over that. And hopefully that's what that speech that Coach Prime gave them on the sideline did and got them yeah. out of that. And maybe we shouldn't, hopefully we won't see that any other time this year. Yeah. Uh, anticipate it going into Arrowhead or uh, Arrowhead Stadium, uh, right, in Kansas City. Yep. Anticipate mm -hmm. it then because you're going to be in an NFL stadium. Maybe, a, you know, might overwhelm some guys. But anticipate it knowing that, you know, Nebraska was too big and you had to give this pep talk. We're going to do this from the get-go now. Yeah. We're going to set these guys up to know this from the get-go now. Right. I, but I agree with you. And I just thought it was a positive that from that point on, I don't think the line was ever great that night, but I thought they played better after yeah. we saw Coach Prime kind of laying into them, which tells you they have some pride, number one, and they've got right. some ability, number two. And so um, if you can get that from the start, I think there's hope for this offensive line. I don't think this group is as bad as we're seeing. I think that something just has to change. I think there's some good talent there. Um, I will say this. Um my, my guy in the middle, Big Bank Hank, what I call him. I love Big Hank mm -hmm. Zelenska. He's got a lot of talent, very smart uh, guy. Um, but we, we want that main street to come out of you, Big Hank. We don't yep. want no one to be looking at this film and thinking that because Big uh, Big Nash and them, you know, really had some success up the middle, that they're going to come in here and do it, and, and you're going to be the guy that they pick on. No. Hank going to step his game up for the rest of the season. Uh, he's gonna be stay in that weight room to continue to be stronger and just stay on that on that in in the film room to be confident so he could play faster uh during the game. I want to see improvements from the whole offensive line, including Big Hank and um and uh Jay Seaton also on the outside. But yeah. my main guys, my seniors, y'all gotta step up. Benson, Mayors, y'all better, and y'all know y'all better, and y'all the leaders on this team. You got young guys around you, step up. And be the guys that we need y'all to be. Shadur and that run game need y'all to be because it's all on y'all. Yeah. And Tyler, always... Tyler Brown's better than he's been too, you know. And yes, so yes. yeah, that group. And so I'm looking forward to seeing it. But um, all right. So yeah, I I, I, I kind of hijacked your question when you asked me for predictions. Yeah, so. let's get the predictions. So let's go to predictions. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to go first or you? You 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 go first. You go first. Okay. Uh you know, I, I think the buffs win this game. I, I think um I think that they need to, first off. I, I do yes. think that if they lose this game, uh season's not over, obviously, but I think that if you lose this game, I would I would back off my prediction of them going to a bowl game. I think it's gonna be really tough if you're one and two going to conference play. Um, I just yeah. think they're gonna respond well. And we did not see them respond well to adversity last year. They have to this year. Um, I think they're going to. Um it, it's the stadium is not even half the size of Lincoln. And I think right. it's going to be one third buff fans. And, yeah. you know, and so it's going to be hostile from those two thirds of Ram fans, but it's nothing like last week. Um, and I just think this team is going to be determined and maybe, maybe they won't be, I don't know, but that's my belief. I think they're going to take a lot of this to heart and they're going to go out and, and really play well and play their best game of the year to this point. And uh, I'm going to go buffs 38, 24. Nice. 38, 24 from Brian. Uh, I'll say this before I give my prediction. Uh, it's going to be definitely um, on the defensive line to put pressure on their quarterback. Mm -hmm. It's going to be definitely because I think we can cover Horton. We can have some schemes back there, whether we double, double him or not and make someone else beat us um, if he plays. But we got to put pressure on Nicolosi. Um, mm -hmm. Is it Fowler Nicolosi? Nicolosi yeah. Fowler. Braden um, Fowler Nicolosi. Yeah. Braden Fowler Nicolosi. That's what it is. Yeah. I like Nicolosi name though, but he's a good <laughs> player, dog. If you give him time, he'll pick you apart and he'll make some plays that you're like, damn, how did he make those plays? So BJ Green, D. Hayes, Oak and Lola, the whole defensive front, Quincy Wiggins, if you get in there, we need pressure from the get-go, mm -hmm. from the jump. Get him, make him uh fluster, man. Hit him, bring him down to the ground. Uh, in the first 10 plays, this is what the start of what Warren Sapp said he wanted to do from the get-go was bring the quarterback down within the first 10 plays. Somebody got to be back there. Somebody has to be determined. If we see that from the defensive line, I think that'll set the tone for the rest of the defensive play. I think the yeah. team is way more talented than Colorado State. On paper, we should 
beat them about 38, 21, 24, whatever. Um, without the mistakes, barring the mistakes, man, we play well. Go up there, do what we have to do, be determined. And we have a run game. That's going to be huge. Have a run game. Uh, force a couple turnovers. I want a, I want a 42. <laughs> we need 42 on the on the scoreboard. 42. Uh, what did I say? 42, 20. I'm right there at 21, 24 also. I'll okay. give them 24. 42, 24, Colorado over Colorado State. And a Rocky Mountain showdown. Hey, you know, and you make a good point about forcing turnovers. They were good at that last year. And the defense has been better this year, but zero takeaways through two games. Zero takeaways. And so they've got to change that. And I think if they're able to get two of them and they were able to protect the ball, if they can have like a plus two in turnovers, I yeah. could definitely see the score being like you said, you know, 42, 24, uh, if not worse. So, um, yeah, they've got to start creating as good as they've been. I, I like the defense. They got to start getting some takeaways. And by the way, I, I, I uh, <laughs> Shout out to NCAA Football 25. I simulated the game a couple times, and I played a couple times. Every time we beat them handily. So, and I'm not the best <laughs> NCAA football player ever, but <laughs> we beat them uh, handily both times I played. So, whatever that's for, you know what I mean. Whatever it is, y'all can check that out on my YouTube page if you want to go to the live stream. Uh, also, this will be up on the YouTube page also. But right now, if you're checking in, make sure you download the Bleacher Report app right now so you can see us each and every week uh midweek live right here on the colorado buffaloes uh, uh bleacher report brought to you uh by the bleacher report with brian and chico is what i'm trying to say can i get it out <laughs> sound like sound like shannon sharp oh uh, oh uh. <laughs> so brian right. i don't know where they can find you man if you can get yeah. yours out goodness gracious yeah, go to dailycamera.com, buffzone.com, uh, on Twitter, Brian Howell 33 See how simple his is? I got to go through. <laughs> Mine is Big Dog Chico, B-I-W-G-D-O-G, type it all in together, and you'll find it. <laughs> Shout out to Goonsville Clothing to be uh, uh, specific, Goonsville Athletics. Like I said, find us uh, on all social media networks and uh, follow us, man. Let us know what y'all thinking. This is Colorado Buffalo's Midweek Live with dog and brian we're gonna be up and about this thing thank you for joining us and we'll be back for more next week peace in the middle east yeah, yeah.